Ugh. Germs. Germs. Oh, wait. This isn't Lysol. This is Old Spice. Oh, I thought things smelled better here. Oh, well, that obviously isn't going to help much. That's okay. I'm a strong, healthy man. I don't have any fear. That coronavirus. But now the office smells a little bit better. Thank you. Yep, and so hello, everyone. I am sorry that this is running so late. You put this on because you know what it is, folks? It is bike week here in Daytona Beach. And it's interesting because the coronavirus has zonked one of the races that I was supposed to be at, but oh well, who cares? Silly bikers. That's okay. I am the one, the only. I am. Let's see. Make me look badass now. The one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk to you. There we go. Let me fix this. About some pro wrestling, not so much about the coronavirus, even though people are like terrified of it. I mean, it is worse than the flu. But then, just like the flu, really, it's still very young, very old. And according to Dr. Oz, it's Dr. Oz. You're better off if you just eat some blueberries and do stuff. I wonder if this stuff would actually work. I just wonder what's in this. Uh, contents under pressure. Do not keep above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep out of reach of children and probably hobos as well. That's okay. I'm not here to talk about anything else. I'm here to talk about some, some pro wrestling. I do apologize for getting this up so late. Um, I've just been busy at work, planning work, and getting a whole bunch of stuff done. Uh, tomorrow, to make it up to you folks, I I'm going to go over to the main part of Bike Week. Nice place by the NASCAR Stadium. A lot better looking. And I might put on a little bonus video. Show you what, well, at least the more civilized part of Bike Week is like. Because trust me, folks, the hour I'm making this video, you want to be nowhere near bikers right now. Especially the Cabbage Patch. And <laughs> although the bikers don't care, they're probably worried about it whole bunch of other diseases besides the coronavirus. Yeah, diseases down there. That's a whole other issue, though. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. I'm going to start with some NWA. NWA. Yeah, something like that. Not quite the ring of YMCA, but that's okay. So uh, this was their squared circle, which is a little bit different from what they've done in the past. What they do for the squared circle is they have a bunch of recaps, and they have some people come in and wrestle. And if they wrestle good, they get a contract. In fact, Sean Spears is doing a little thing. I might have to figure out how to work Twitter and go on Sean Spears' Twitter, I think. Post my little 15 second promo of why you should have Hobo Tom as a tag team partner. Can't hurt, right? You gotta be in it to win it, folks. So, that being said, some NWA action. Now, it starts off with a whole bunch of recaps. Also, they talk about the Crockett Cup coming up, I wanna say April 19th. Well, also, if I hear any news, <coughs> oh, yeah. Man, I don't know what's worse. The coronavirus or just spraying this stuff all over the, this place. If I hear any news about WrestleMania, I'll definitely keep you guys posted. Um, I am still, I'm also still planning to go to the NXT event. I think the gymnasium like only holds 400. And trust me, there's a lot worse you can get in that gymnasium than the coronavirus. So with all that being said, uh, we start with the matches with Colby Carino, the son of Steve Carino, taking on George South. Oh, wow. George South is a character straight out of the 70s, late 70s, 80s NWA. 
George South belongs in W8. So does Colby Crino, though. Uh, it's a good match. Uh, again, George South, st straight out of the 70s, 80s. It looks like they picked him out of some southern Alabama bar and said, go have a match with this guy. Here, here's a couple of beers for your effort. He's like, you're giving me beer? I'll do that. Uh, Colby Crino, again, he does a side headlock. Again, things they would do in the 70s and 80s. And George South is so good, selling it so good. Uh, Colby definitely learned stuff from his dad. That's good to see. George South learned from the Baron Von Rapsky and Stu Barrett. I applaud you, Stu Barrett. You also knew who innovated the, the feared iron claw of Baron Rapsky, one of the first wrestlers I've ever seen. Because he had neck veinage. He was bald. He looked like a proper Deutscher. Man. Yes. He looked like a proper German. And looked like he could like just take that iron claw and crush your skull. Baron Von Vesky, very intimidating. He had some good matches, I think, against Von Eriks. Uh, whoever Skandar Akbar was, was managing. I think it was him and Colonel De Beers had a whole series of, whoa, just how are they not dead matches? Because they would just like punch each other in the face. Very basic stuff. And if you don't know who Colonel De Beers is, go look him up on YouTube, you young people. I'm tired of trying to explain to the younger generation what would happen in my generation. Because at my store, we're having like an 80s throwback, man. Everything's in neon colors, hot pink, clear straps. Whoa! I'm just waiting for them to bring me a case of Zima and some Crystal Pepsi, and I'll be good to go. Oh, I should put that down, too. Yeah, I'll see if I can make that. Uh, again, this was a match of the 80s against, I mentioned, Baron Von Rashke. Thank you very much. Stu, you made me feel a little bit younger. Uh, I love the fact that, again, George South, you piece of trash. I like that. Uh, he did miss the three-point tackle, though. Very classic. Jim Duggins, again, very 70s and 80s-ish. Uh, he did that. Colby uh, Crino won by roll-up. Wasn't a bad match. I'll tell you what. I enjoyed the character work by both by both Colby and George and George South, the wrestling was good. It flowed. It told a story. I like that stuff. This is this was a cheeseburger match. Then we had had Freya. Taking on Danny, John, Dan, Danny Jordan. Danny Jordan, at least. I think I've heard of her. I think I saw one of her t-shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees. Um, she is the original Mean Girl, I think, or something like that. She's like the original. Yeah, I think she is the original Mean Girl. Um, uh, th this was a weird match. Danny Jordan looks like she's been a wrestler. Freya looks like they... Pulled someone and put her in an outfit that honestly was a little too small for her. And for some reason, fishnet stockings always get torn. I don't know what it is. Just don't wear any stockings whatsoever. Guys don't wear stockings. Why should women really wear stockings? Guys shave their legs, women shave their legs in pro wrestling. I wouldn't, though. I would just be. This is fat, this FPOS, wandering around, collecting beer cans. That's what you have to look forward to, Sean Spears. <laughs> I'll, I'll do all your dirty work. I'll bite Cody in the, in the face. I'll, I'll rip the ears off. Whoever, Joey Janela. Just give me some. Looking good on my recycling plan. You got to get my real money. But this was an interesting match. Um, Annie is short. She was a, a she was a whole head shorter than Freya. 
Uh, Daniel was trying to 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 leg kick Freya. Freya either for, for to begin with, some of the strikes is like, okay, Freya's too big and too strong. You're not going to shoulder tackle Freya. The leg kicks though, either she's not delivering them right, or she has to get a little stiffer with those leg kicks, or Freya just doesn't know how to sell. And Freya was doing things that that those were. Um, and then he did try to work over the leg again when it got to the ropes. Freya just did kind of a few power moves. Um, the match really, it wasn't, except for the, the, the end, but the match didn't have any flow to it, though. Um, if you're going to do one move, don't back off. You have to kind of, the, the, the thing, the thing, the big difference was, at least in the Colby Crino, George South match, there was some chain wrestling. Uh, it, uh, it wasn't, Ridiculous lucha chain wrestling. You don't expect that from it, from people at this level. You don't expect that in the NWA, really. But there was no chain. There was no building of moves. There was no building of momentum. It seemed like, okay, move, 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 move. Like, there can be move, counter, 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 move. Oh, that's interesting. Again, um... Go off the roads. You just say, you just like say like uh, a duck, duck, drop kick. So you go hop, duck, duck, duck. Whoa, drop kick. Or you go like uh, backdrop, duck, duck, slide, clothesline. Let's see here. So, up oh, leapfrog. There we go. Whoop, duck, duck. Whoa! Slide. Get up. Clothesline! Again, a little bit of chain wrestling, putting some moves together. That would have made this match feel more complete. Uh, and Freya was coming out of that outfit. Up top, you can see the sports bra pop out. Again, she wore that it's too small. Down there, I saw outer labia. I'm like, oh! I know what that is. I learned about that in anatomy and physiology. And going to strip clubs. But yeah, um, Freya has to get a better outfit. She, this was like 80, this was like <laughs> 80s workout singlet lycra by women. Yeah, all you have to do is watch any 1980s Jamie Lee, Lee Curtis movie. You'll know exactly what I am talking about. Or a movie that I purchased recently. Weird Science! I'm still going to enjoy that after Lent's over. Kelly LeBrock's amazing. I don't care what they say, Kelly LeBrock's still amazing. Yeah, she was on like the Celebrity Biggest Loser too. But Kelly LeBrock, still amazing. Uh, then there was like Freya botching just like a basic body slam that's not a good look if, if you can't do a basic pick and move like a body slam I could probably do a body slam to most anyone and not drop them on their head unless it's like a huge guy if it's a guy my size a little bit smaller no problem Seth Rollins it's fine AJ Styles I'm sure um, I, you, you get to like like Otis but then again, not many people are going to ever body slam Otis, though. From Heavy Machinery, Tucker Knight. Um, I'm sure he would do his darndest to, to try, though. Like the big show. You get to a certain size, and there's, there's a whole size issue. Whereas a big person trying to body slam the smaller person, that should just literally be automatic. Not automatic in this. Again, it felt disjointed. Again, that kind of weird botch. And then that Michinoku driver like looked like she just like picked her up and just like fell. It didn't look smooth at all. Uh, Freya did go over though. Ugh. Danny Jones, Danny Jordan put on go a little bit more effort than Freya. Danny Jordan probably deserves more so to get the contract. Freya has to go back. To, to the um, 
strip club. And uh, it just it was just a weird match. It, it was a piece of toast. And that's where because normally NWA is pretty good. Um, they're going to do this again next week, so this will be really interesting to see. Because what do I what do I do next week? This hour, Wednesday. Oh, I work all day long. Wait, do I? Seventeenth. Oh, I work. I work then. Indeed. Um, so let's see. Oh, I have to. I should write. Oh, I have to. I have so much stuff to do. Yeah. So that. That's all day. I have to change that. And that's ten thirty to five thirty. So I do that. That is. Yep. Yep. Because I have off Thursday. So, so there's Impact, NWA, no, no AEW. Oh yeah, by the way, folks, um, I think they're gonna have AEW next week in an empty arena here in Jacksonville, because they canceled the Rochester show. They're still gonna have AEW show. I think it's gonna be an empty stadium. I, that's gonna be weird, because I really don't know. Who in AEW could carry on an empty stadium match? Um, that's it's kind of hard to say. Moxley could, like, if they did a uh, just a whole boiler room brawl, Moxley could carry anyone in one of those. Joey Janela might, but AEW is so tuned into the crowd. It's Hard to think what's going to happen. So, so this again, whole coronavirus thing. Let me, let me spray a little bit more for good measure. Oh, sorry, cheese, but yeah, well, there we go. Do that for more. I'm just annoying my. What? So, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, that was NWA Wrestling. A weird show. I hate to say it. Now let's see here. Let's see if I can get to you. Whoa. Look at all these notes on AEW. What about AEW? But first, folks, let's start off with some shout outs. I finally got my first piece of spam mail on Gmail. It took them two whole years. But I finally want to get one of those. I am an overseas investor from a certain in country, and I have in my possession twelve million dollars. Well, guess what? For your twelve million dollars, I'll trade you that for a six count, Miss Diane.
goes for Sahara. And Dick Butt, sir, thank you for commenting on my poll. Forget what it was. I put a yes no question. I think he responded yes. So I forget what. That's okay. I wrote I wrote your name down in my notes. So you did something. Therefore, sir, you are a master of the air guitar. And I'll talk about some AEW. And a lot of this was a weird show because this was a really empty looking show. The whole lower bowl, at least from the hard camera view, seemed to be full. I think it was like the whole lower bowl was full, but the second tier and the third tier, man, they were tarped off. I don't know if it's the whole. Coronavirus. I say that I think I should wash my mouth out with soap. So I don't know if it's again that whole coronavirus. A second. So I said it again. Or what? But people just weren't showing up. I think they were in Utah. That might have something to do with it too. And I was actually shocked. I didn't realize that they sold beer in arenas in Utah. I thought they were all Mormon. I know Mormons can't drink soda. They can't have caffeine. They can't drink alcohol. Wait a second. No soda, no caffeine, no alcohol? Oh! Do you know how miserable my life would be? Wait, it is miserable like that. It's Lent. Except for, I can have caffeine, though. I just can't have soda. I can't have alcohol. So I guess that caffeine, that still perks me up. Because bubbly does make it caffeinated bubbly water. And I figure it's not soda. Because it has, like, no sugars in it. It's, like, literally, I think, lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, fizzy water, and caffeine. Indeed. Uh, I did give them my energy drinks because they're, they're probably not healthy for you anyway. Yeah, I can't wait till I can eat. I can't wait till I can eat meat again. Had I had another Impossible Whopper. I'm still impressed by what Burger King did a really good job with the Impossible Whopper. I do have some Impossible Meat Burger Patties. Which I'm going to have to munch on. Oh, shoot. Is that a weird mug? Oh, I just realized. I have three Friday meals I have to cook. Shoot. What is that weird time, weird grocery shopping time? Oh, well. But, um, so I want to see how my Impossible Whopper, the one that I make by hand, stacks up against 
the Burger King Impossible Whopper. And I'll probably show you how to make that later on YouTube. Mine's going to have cheese on it because cheese is extra and I don't have any money. So I'm a poor hobo. So then, um, so enough about that. Uh, AEW starts off by who does Hangman Page pick for his partner? Because Kenny Omega, he's out with a, with a broken hand, which he can use to punch with pretty easily. Uh, is it going to be a member of the Young Bucks? The Bucks of Youth? Uh, it's definitely not going to be Matt Jackson because Hangman Page is just like, Whoop! You're number one in my book, Jackson. It's like, but you know what? Your brother Nick's pretty cool. Oh, and then Matt, then he leaves, and like Matt's like, you're not gonna really team with a jerk, are you? It's like Matt, you're the jerk. You're always the jerk. And Kenny wanted to be the with the be the golden lovers. You were the jerk there too. You're a jerk, Matt Jackson. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. Uh, so after that, that was pretty cool. Although, it did lead to a question mark. Could the question mark be coming to AEW? No, uh, I, I, I doubt that. So it starts off with Ortiz versus Co Cody Rhodes, which was amazing. Um, again, the top two levels were tarped off. It was a really fast start, running the ropes back and forth. Then Lance Archer comes out with Jake the Snake Roberts. The vile, disgusting human being, Jake the Snake Roberts. The dirty person who had a cobra bite the macho man. Again, you're going to see that whole story about how that went down. Uh, I think Dark Side of the Ring, they have their second series coming out, I think, in April. Which I want to see because I think the first story is going to be the Chris Benoit story. That's going to be awesome. All the dark side of the ring stories, they were all amazing. They all took place in the 80s. Wait. They did all take place in the 80s. The 80s was the greatest decade ever. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so with this again, this kind of distracts Cody and allows Hernandez to kind of double team. Cody for a little bit because he's thoroughly confused. The ref is like, what? And then Ortiz is there. Uh, Cody does get a single leg Boston Crab on Ortiz. And I'll tell you what. Jim Ross is funny. He has like no clue what muscles what. Because he was talking about like the quadriceps and said, oh yeah, that'll, that'll tear your last. It's like, it's like, and Excalibur says, no, that's the quad. Do you know how many people have wrestled with a quad injury? Well, I know a torn bicep's bad. JR has no clue. JR on some things is so checked out. Uh, I don't even get... But, well, actually, I don't have that much bad to say, but JR's like... He's checked out when I... To the, to the women's... Cody eventually does make his comeback. Again, he does that reverse duplex, which is great looking. And then, of course, he goes up to the top rope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ten. 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 The perfect ten punches. And then he tosses his weight belt. Again, a free souvenir. Those aren't cheap. You know, he does that at every show now. It's kind of cool. But one, you have to be a fan who's expecting to get a weight belt. That weight belt lands on your face. Oh. Especially if it's a metal part of the business, the business end of that weight belt. Boy, you got two ways to give you a whooping. You can be with a leather end or the business end, boy. Don't make me that mad. Well, I'm going to use the business end of that belt, baby. Sweetheart, you don't want none of that. Uh, then there was... Oh, yeah. Then Brandy took off her belt. Oh, and by the way, Brandy should always wear Daisy Dukes and a, and, and a belly shirt. Cody Rhodes, you, sir, were definitely punching above your weight class when you met her. Wow. But, yeah, Brandy took off her belt and started to whip Ortiz. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, then there was a superplex by Ortiz, and and poor poor Hern, poor Hernandez, 
Um, let's see, because he got beat up a little bit. Ortiz face first onto the ring side because he got pulled off. Uh, Lance Archer almost jumped the rail, but not quite. So again, if he jumped the rail, then security should get there. But if he didn't jump the rail, he was held back. Security's like, okay, you, you, you tranquil it enough. It was a basement drop kick by Ortiz into a fisherman's suplex. Getting great wrestling is a crossroads, countered by a knee. They figure out how to counter the crossroads. That's just kind of like you're Cody in the head with your knee if you can get it up high enough. Uh, Cody goes off to the legs for the figure four. The whoa, Rick Flair figure four. Whoa. Yep, and he actually, Ortiz actually taps. However, because Cody's still stuck in the figure four, Santana jumps in. Or, yeah, Hernandez. I'm sorry. Is it Santana? I always forget now. Uh, well, the other guy jumps, jumps in, starts to beat up Cody. Chris Jericho shows up. <laughs> Chris Jody called him a pumpkin head tip shit. That was awesome. Uh, Nick Jackson, he got jumped in the back. He's like, oh, yeah. You thought this guy was going to help you? Oh, we just went into the hospital. So Nick Jackson's in the back. He's all beat up looking. He has the little um, scroll down kind of door opening thing, industrial thing. Like close on him, and he's all he's all bloody. So then they have to go to the hospital, and Cody's off the show until the very end. And I'll tell you what, that was a fun match. That's a good surf and turf match. And we had Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida. Maybe that's how the coronavirus came here. Oh, wait. I, I said that word again. Maybe Chris Statlander brought that virus from the Andromeda Galaxy. That's why no one knows what it's doing. And everyone's canceling everything now, which just kind of is weird. People are terrified. Whatever. Um, but Chris Satlander and Hikaru Shido are taking on Bree Priestley. Bree, 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 and Nyla Rose. Wow, this is a weird matchup. Uh, the heels kind of jump. The faces, very typical fashion there. Uh, Nyla's a strong move scent. Again, very early. She does a leg drop, which actually looks really good. In early parts of Nyla Rose's matches, she looks really good. But then I know in singles matches, he, she seems to get gassed really early. Now that she has a tag, now that when she works in a tag team, not so much. She gets to catch her breath, get her energy back, maybe take the belt off Nyla Rose and have her be in a woman's tag team. Like constantly. She, they could do that. Again, I want to see Fabi Apache come in. Yeah, I, thinking, I think Nyla Rose and Fabi Apache are different. They almost look the same. They have the same gimmick. Almost. Uh, what else is there? Again, Statlander had that drop kick. That amazing drop kick. Chris Statlander is great. Uh, then she does oh, a round in her. Oh, she does a European uppercut and the running knee, which is great. Then she then they go around the galaxy. Uh, round and around and around she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. And then Bree Priestley locked on the Black Widow on Chris Statlander. And some moron in the crowd shouted, Tap you, stupid alien! Stupid alien! Uh, so someone's very bitter. I'll tell you what, I like Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander is a good female wrestler. He's also hot, too. And single. Hey, I'm single. And then Bree got sent off the ropes. He got low bridged. Did some other ring move. Oh yeah, Bree has Bree has to go back. She has to learn something from Will Osprey because she has terrible ring placement. Because the Kyrie Cheetah tagged herself in, and people are going, "Holy Sheeta!" 
And I don't know what Brie was thinking of, but she has terrible ring placement. Her ring awareness is not good because she was in the corner because she got, like, tossed into Chris Danlander really awkwardly, too. It's one of the things, like, what was she doing there? Like, And I don't think it was Shida's fault. I think Brie Priestley had to be back a little further because Chris Danlander looked like she was going to, like, kind of near a little bit. But she was, like, too close, so she just, like, Brie Priestley, like, wound up flying into, like, Chris Danlander's gut. You can tell because Chris Statlander raised the knee up, and Brie Priestley says she has to she has to go back to WCPW. Oh wait, there's no more WC. There's no more Defiant. Who knows? She has to go back to Joshi Wrestling. Oh well, she has to take a she has to take a lesson from 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 Nixon Newell and go to NXT. Yeah, where she can just be one of many amazing female talents. Unlike AEW. But let's see, then there was a tandem offense by the faces. The Michinoku driver, well, that looks good. And it was really fun. Uh, Shida was stuck on the outside. And Nyla Rose and Brie Priestley won. Kind of shocking. It was good, though. Um, then Brie attacks. Nyla Rose holds up the belt. She looks confused. She's like, well, what do I do with this thing? I don't know. Uh, I use it on a dresser. Terrible looking belt. I'll tell you what. The women's division is getting better. They're doing it incrementally. They're obviously not having 90-pound women on the show. Uh, Britt Baker is reduced to just doing promos, which is probably a second good thing with the women's division. They're letting the actual pros wrestle. It'll be good to see Awesome Kong whenever she comes back. Uh, Mel, I think, was okay. Chris Allen is great. Shane is... Just, makes me makes me chuckle. Brie Priestley should be better than this. This is like Brie Priestley's like second bad match. The one in the Royal and the Full House Royal Rumble thing. That was not good. She didn't have a good showing there either. I don't know. I don't know if she took some time off or if she's just been telling Will Osprey what to do. Who knows? But this was a, this was fun, though. It's getting better. I can see the progression. This was actually a ham sandwich. Then there was a Chris, Christopher Daniels recap on update. Dork order sucks. Kind of the whole mission. There. Then let's see here. We had MJF, the Butcher and the Blade, and the Bunny taking on Jurassic Express. And this, oh, Allie. Oh, I just lose that tongue ring, Allie. You're so hot. Tongue ring is. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No tongue ring. It's just a terrible look. Uh, Luchasaurus starts off, he scares MJF. Of course, if I saw a big guy in a dinosaur mask, I'd probably be terrified too. Uh, MJF, again, doesn't really want to face him. So, so the other two, the Butcher and the Blade, they double chop block Luchasaurus. Again, this whole ring placement is weird because Luchasaurus is right in his own corner. He kind of made the tag. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's a different ring size because I want to say the. I know most of them are 20 by 20s. Although I swear, AAA has like a 24 foot ring, the 24, 24 by 20, 24 square ring. I think on the boat they went back to a 16. So that that makes sense though. I mean, yeah, but to, to put a 20 by 20 on a boat's kind of hard. 16 by 16 is a little bit easier, even though you wouldn't think that because you are actually losing. Eight feet, four feet this side, four feet this side. On a boat, it just makes more sense. So with this, the bush and the blade, they make the quick tags. They're smart. They double team and isolate Luchasaurus. Uh, MJF just knee. <laughs> oh, that hard knee to Luchasaurus. Uh, Luchasaurus eventually comes back, delivers the knee. Oh, he tries to make the tag. 
but is dragged by both the butcher and the blade. Well, by the blade and and, and Jeff into the corner. The butcher sits there. He's just, oh, the butcher's the best of those three. Says NJF's character work. The jungle boy eventually does get the hot tag, and then to the outside you go. And then it's flippy stuff to the outside. Marco Stunt goes flying. Luchasaurus goes flying. Luchasaurus almost killed himself, though. It seemed like he caught his uh, feet on the ropes. That's that's an instant disaster. That was a near choke slam. Because he actually did. Oh, he actually did. He actually saved himself. It wasn't. He was going for a dive. He like caught, did a flip, did like a flying leg drop. Again, that kind of looks scary for all the wrong reasons. There was no choke slam though. Again, just kind of. Again, just he, he did the kick, the standing moon salt. That was awesome. Uh, the butcher. He just like Marco's son tried to like do a cross by you, the butcher. It's just like, oh, you little toy kid, get out of my face! And then of course you have the the, the two big men, Luchasaurus, and and the and the Busher square off. Oh, that was so good. Uh, eventually, Marco Stunt kind of starts to stomp a mud hole into MJF. That was the best. Um, however, Marco Stunt taps to the Fujiwara armbar. It's been a long time since I've seen the Fujiwara armbar used as a submission. I think the last time I saw it used as a submission, uh, Lil Guido used it as a member of the full blooded Italians. Wait. What? The late 90s, early aughts in ECW? Maybe WWF at the time? But MJF, the Butcher, and the Blade, and, and the Bunny. Of course, the Bunny got on distracted. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Marco son should have been just taxing more. All she should have done is her little shoulder shimmy. Little shoulder shimmy and hip wiggle. Showed her little bunny tail. And just hide her tongue ring. Disgusting tongue ring. And distracted one better, but that's okay. The bunny did her job. And MJF the Butcher and the Blade pick up a win. Good for them because the Butcher and the Blade haven't won Jack spot. So they needed that win. I'll tell you what, it was kind of fun and entertaining. It was a cheeseburger match. And then Tony interviews Britt Baker. People say Britt Baker's good. Although Britt Baker did make fun of the Utah crowd. I like it. She said they all look related. You bunch of inbred Mormons. And so let's see here. So the next is another trios match. I mean, I think they're going to have a trios belt eventually. They have to. They have, I mean, they have Triangular de la Muerta, the Death Triangle. They have the Jurassic Express. You have that's a quick way to put on put the belt on uh, MJF the butcher butcher and the blade. Or they make it an engine Jenner have the butcher the blade and the bunny do that. So that's like three or four combinations. The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, if you ever drop the bag belt. Uh, best friend, we you know a lot. Best friends and Orange Cassidy. The Dark Order. That's seven people. That's seven teams. That makes sense. You have a trio's champion, just like Lucha Underground. Lucha, 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 Lucha. So this match featured Joey Janelle, Private Party, taking on Triangular de la Muerta, Pac, Pentagon Jr., and Ray Phoenix. Oh, those three are awesome. Uh, the heels again jump the faces though. That's and JR. He's like, oh, they have green chilies. Because I think that was the next show. It's like, oh, they're known for green chilies when they go to Boulder, Colorado. So JR. JR has to stop these nonsensical things about beans, chilies, cakes, and pies. It just makes no sense. He just sounds like old man. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. Who cares what's going on in the ring? JR is actually getting bad. It was good for a while because you needed someone who knew some wrestling, but they have Taz. 
Just put Taz in for JR. Say, JR, thank you, sir. Go back to Oklahoma with your beans and, and barbecue sauce. Get in here, Taz. Uh, pack. And the uh, one person from private party, I forget who it was, start running them up so fast. They do so much stuff. This was really a fast-paced match. Then there was the Mexican arm drag, drop kicks. Uh, private party's holding a suck it. Did the silly string to him. Uh, Joey Janela and Pentagon Jr. <laughs> Pentagon Jr. started beating him up. Again, it was just fast rope running by everyone. This was an amazing Lucha style match, which is great. The Bastard Pot can do that. He can slow it down when he needs to. Because he has his other two tag team partners and Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. to speed things up. Private Party will go fast forever. And Joey Janela, he, he just does, does dives. And, and Death Valley drivers are his thing. And, oh, again, having Joey just jives on everyone. And, wow, those Lucha Chops. They, they teach you something in Mexico, how to deliver nasty, wicked-sounding chops. We heard them earlier in the week on Monday from Andrade. And again, Pentagon Jr. Oh, that just reverberates. That, that, that puts hamburger meat on my chest. And that, like, flying headbutt that Joey Janelle did, even though I don't think he meant to do a flying headbutt. That's what it looked like. Uh, what else? Then they hit the gin and juice, uh, DVD combination again, uh, Pentagon Jr. Then there was something else, Star Press. I mean, private party, they do so much, it's hard to mention. Pentagon Jr. eventually, he has a, he has the best sling blade. Seth, yeah, it's okay. Finn Balor looks like he's just flying through the air. Pentagon Jr. looks like he puts some dank on it, though. Then there was the power bomb to the knees, to, to the knees, and a stomp on top of that by Triangular Demon Warriors. So that was amazing. Then it became your typical six man spot fest. And Ray Phoenix did a double, a double springboard. I don't know how he does it. Ray Phoenix is amazing. He did that double springboard cutter. Then it was the stomp package pile driver to the black arrow. Oh, wow. That was amazing. Triangular de la Muerta win the match in spectacular fashion. It was a surf and turf match with Saro Miedo. And of course, they had to do their pose. Uh, it was like a double brutalizer, and Ben's guy was just like fighting the year of Joey Janela. That was like weird. Then the best friends obviously came in and made the save. No one wants anything to do with Orange Cassidy. And That's okay by me. Too sweet. The man of the hour. Oh, they are. That's right. He, he said, um, Orange Cassidy came in. He's the man of the hour. Too sweet to be sour. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I would do if I saw Orange Cassidy in a ring. Yeah. I don't know if I would shake my hand or slap him in the face. Oh, yeah. Cause the cream always rises to the top. Yeah. Not so much the OJ, but the cream. And the macho man is the cream. Because he lives in the present, because the past is already over, and the future is yet to be, so you have to stay in the present. Yeah! And whenever I get to do my Macho Man impersonation, I will do it. Macho Man is so good. His, his promos are missed by everyone. Then there's Lexi! Whoa! Where'd they pick up her? Hey, Lexi! I'm single too, sweetie! Uh, she was interviewing Dustin Rhodes. Dustin Rhodes is going to be the mystery partner. Then you see Hangman, Head, and Page curling empty beer kegs. And you can tell they were empty because then he would throw it over the back of his head and then make that empty sound. And then Simon Miller got an AEW. Bravo, sir. You know what? I want to get on AEW. 
I could make a 15 second promo. So that was great. Simon Miller, you got an AEW. You, sir, get this spinny up. And then JR interviewed Moxley, I guess, at his house somewhere. I don't think it was in the arena. Probably at Moxley's house. They were probably eating steak, beer, and barbecue sauce. Because he's not medically fit to clear. He's like, I don't care what these doctors say. He's being John Moxley. Again, John Moxley is the one person that could actually really do a empty arena boiler room brawl match. And this led up to the tag team event. Uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara taking on Hammond Page and Dustin Rhodes. And Sammy, oh, Sammy, boy. You're the smallest of them all. You're going to eat some of the nasty chops. And there was quick tag and some continuity between um, Hangman Adam Page and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, Page eventually wound up in the wrong part of the ring. He wound up in the corner of Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. You know what happens when you're on the heels section? You just get beat up. Uh, Jericho again beat, <laughs> beat, beat Sip Penn and Page. And then he takes a person's beer and, like, daintily takes sips of that beer. But his hangman page just takes that beer from him, throws it, I think punches, yeah, throws it in the face of Jericho. Takes a guy's beer, just starts to chug the beer. Chug, 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 chug. Oh, hangman and page, you're now truly number one in my book. You're my hero. Page is my hero. Cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. Oh, I want to know, folks. I know the way I watch AEW, they actually have all the cursing. There are no beat marks. I want to know if on TNT, do they like beep out the crowd half the time? Because I've heard people say on TNT it seems awful quiet. And when it's have to switch between like Fight Network and TNT, you can tell there's a difference. It's like, why is that? Why is there like the like, blank noise? The, the, Blank. They must be cursing. They don't allow that in TNT, but on Fight TV, you can say whatever, whatever the f you feel like, biatch. You. What was that word? Pumpkin head, pumpkin head dipshit. I like that. That's almost like like what I said. I said um, which is kind of to put down for moments of the moments of the year. Uh, when uh, the phrase of the year was. It somewhat covers her taint. <laughs> Someone found that on this word hilarious. Like, I've never heard those words used in that combination before. You probably will never hear those words used in that combination ever again. Uh, let's see here. Where are you leave? Yep. Uh, Paige eventually gets a hot tag. The sliding lariat. Uh, Chris Jericho hits a line salt. However, he catches the knee. He catches the knees of Dustin. Uh, the splash by Dustin inside, inside the ring. Page goes for a moonsault outside. So, I don't know how they did. It. These are two big guys. Hangman and Page isn't necessarily small. Medium build. Dustin Rhodes a little bit bigger. Somehow they shared the same corner turnbuckle. And again, Dustin went inside the ring, and Page went outside the ring. Uh, Chris eventually. <laughs> Got nailed by Paige. Uh, Dustin hit the Canadian Destroyer. Buckshot Larry combination. Adam Page. Ay, ay, ay. Win, along with Dustin Rhodes. And then, of course, under a circle jump in. They just beat up the two. Uh, Kenny Omega shows up, even with a bad hand, gets beat up. Cody's back, he gets beat up. Matt Jackson, he gets beat up. Uh, Jackson stares at Paige, and he says, Adam Page, you're number one in my book. Son of a bitch. And I'll tell you what, that was a whole fun match. Another surf and turf match. Oh, boy, they do a lot of wrestling on this show called AEW. So let's see here. That was it. That's it. That's the entire show. It covers, but it was a doubleheader for both NWA and AEW. Uh, a couple notes of interest tomorrow. I'm getting the bike week, so I'll get. I'll take some videos of 
of what the main part of Bike Week looks Oh, that was a nice even rep. Where did I do that? Uh, so I'll be there at Bike Week, assuming the coronavirus hasn't scared everyone all away. Again, those bikers are, are worried about much other different diseases than the coronavirus. And I'll have a little bonus feature. Probably a video about that. I'll put that into makeup for, for me being so late for this video. Uh, Friday night, I also make, yeah, I can also make my typical SmackDown. Although it'll be weird. It, it'll be weird. SmackDown is going to be in the Performance Center. They're just really going to have essential personnel there. So it's going to be weird. I think the WWE athletes are a lot better at wrestling without a crowd than, say, AEW wrestlers could. It's, it's just a whole different system, a whole, whole different style almost. And hopefully NXT is still coming to town. So I, know that gym, I think that gym at most holds maybe three to 400. I mean, it's a glorified gym. I'd be impressed if it held 400. Like, I think from what I've heard, like 200 to 250 is about the number. Again, people from Daytona Beach, they, they realize that there are a lot worse diseases you could get in Daytona Beach besides the coronavirus. So you can see me, the one, the only Hobo Tom there. And if you do see me and say, hey, you're Hobo Tom, you'll get a free shot on this here YouTube channel. And then um, I'll, I'll put that video, so I'll put that video up Saturday, Sunday, I'm off. Then next week, Monday is going to be Raw. Tuesday will be actually NWA Impact. Wednesday, I can't catch it because I am working that night. Thursday I'm off. Saturday's again a normal um, SmackDown. And Saturday is going to be Rey de Reyes, so I'm going to miss that unfortunately. So that's next week too, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share,